afternoon everyone hope you're all well we're in the King Edward Memorial Park on the highway which was once Ratcliffe Highway and we're looking over at the old Surrey docks quite a few of the old buildings have been retained which is what I like to see I mean the docks were never coming back so it's good that these buildings were turned over to another use which is housing and commercial bases and stuff like that and here we are back at looking at the uh, okay, right there we are tunnel shaft on the Surrey dockside for the Rotherhive tunnel you get some nice views down the river here or from here and this is the tunnel shaft on our East London side of the river. Sorry about that, why I got caught up. Which it's always doing. Yes, yeah, so you get some nice views down the river and there's another little piece of London's lost, abandoned and pretty much forgotten past by the looks of it, which I will show you now. I can see the spires of several churches over that side of the river so when I've if I eventually cover everything on our side of the river then I'll be back over or hopefully be over to this side but as I said before I think I'm gonna need several lifetimes to cover it all this is the Thames Tideway development and you get another view of that and that used to be pedestrianised at one point, like the Woolwich Foot Tunnel and the Greenwich Foot Tunnel. People could go down there on a great big spiral staircase down into the Rotherhive Tunnel and walk through the tunnel. It is still a pedestrianised tunnel, but because it's so polluted and so badly ventilated, not many people go through there. About 20 people a day. But the tunnel is, is, is a long tunnel. And when they built it, they built it with two extreme curves at either end. So, what they believed was basically, with such a long tunnel, if the horses got near towards one side and saw the light, they would bolt for the light and cause a bit of a bit of mayhem. So that's why you've got the two extreme curves at either end of the tunnel. But yeah, that was spin around here. Show you that. And I'll go over this way, because the thing I want to show you is over here. Just down here. It's all fenced off, so you can't get into it. It's one of the old uh, slipways into the Thames. And you can see it's well gated and fenced off there. Right. See the old uh, pulley system for letting boats in and out. God knows when it was disconnected or is put out of use. See those <clears throat> those steps are old because they got the scratches in them to stop people from slipping. Down the river. Oh, yeah, a bit of London's lost past. Don't look like they've been used or accessible for a good long time. Some sort of adventure <coughs> playground thing over there. It's a climbing frame thing. There we are. I'd love to get in there and go down into the tunnel that way, but they got damaged in the Second World War and they've never been open to pedestrians since then. So, although you can access the tunnel and walk through it at either end, which if you've seen my video, you'll have seen already, and if you haven't seen it, have a look out for my Roha Hive tunnel video. Anyway guys and girls, hope everyone's having a great Sunday. This was just a little catch up to let you know I'm more or less why well, I am all done now for the day. So yeah, I shall be off home having my dinner because I'm bloody hungry. Alright, take care all. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. After doing a bit of research on these abandoned stairs, I've uh, uncovered a little interesting snippet of London and the River Thames's lost past. This is the location as we see it today, marked on the map and I've marked it off in red. 
They were Shadwell Dock Stairs. And they're an interesting thing because they haven't always been in the same location. Shadwell Dock Stairs today are fenced off and show evidence of an alternative use of providing access to the river. They're located on the pathway that leads from Glamis Road to the northern end of King Edward Memorial Park, where the northern ventilation slash old pedestrian access building for the Rotherhive Tunnel is located. Anyone that's seen my Rotherhive Tunnel video will know all about that one, but back to our thing here. Because, as I say, they haven't stayed always in the same location. The map on the left is Rocks or Rocky's 1740s map, and the stairs are marked off there in yellow. And on the right, you've got an ordnance survey map from the 1890s, and the stairs are marked off in yellow there. This is the Rocks or Rock Hughes map, and I, I love old maps of London like this, 1746. But look all along the edge of the river at the names of all the stairs. As I've said before in other videos, the Thames back in those days was much more of a highway than the roads were because the roads were dodgy, dangerous, smelly and not something that most people wish to do and the Thames was the main way that people got around at the many river stairs where you'd flag down a waterman or a Thames boatman and he'd take you up, down or across river but yeah, our location here is marked off with a red arrow Shadwell Dock Stairs and in between the 1740s and 1895 if you look over to the left, you can see Shadwell New Basin, what we just call Shadwell Basin now, which was built in, in that time frame. And the stairs have moved further along. They're marked off in red, as you can see. So yeah, um, we really think of, especially this bit of London, in recent times, as having changed beyond all recognition, and that it never used to be like that. Sorry, that's the Whittington chime on my <laughs> one of my chiming clocks. Yeah, it never used to be like that, but this area of London has always changed a lot. Particularly in the old days, and the main reasons for its changing was developing in shipping. I mean, in the early days, you just had the warehouses and the wharves along the river. But when the big boats and the docks and everything came in, and the bigger ships, and that's when you needed basins and docks. And that's what we see here, the big changes that took place between Georgian and Victorian era. So now we know what our stairs are and that they've moved about a bit in their time. We've seen them as they are nowadays and off into the past for a bit of now and then. Lovely photograph, circa 1930s. And it really shows the industrial heartland as it was back in those days. Over to the left, you can see our location, Shadwell Dock Stairs. Um, much more exposed and prominent than they are now because they were still in use then. And over to the right, the Rotherhive Tunnel air shaft. At that time, still with its original glass roof on. They took the glass roof off during the 1930s to aid ventilation. Another cracking image, the August heat wave of 1933. And as you can see all the kids down on the riverbank there bathing and playing, it probably would have been quite unhygienic because the river was not clean, but they seem happy enough. The 1950s, and they're slowly disappearing and being encroached upon. Which leads us on to this image from 1976, when the stairs were fenced and gated off and no longer accessible. You can see the old building site in the background, all the wartime damage and stuff. And that leads us on to these three images that I took myself that shows us what we've got today. And that is the history of Shadwell Dock Stairs. Hope you've all enjoyed. And thanks for watching.